this week in our Bodies Effin' Amazing, and we'd be dead if we had to think or modulate even 1% of what's going on in there, we venture back into the mitochondria, or as we discussed in prior videos, the very secret to complex life as we know it. So they're kind of a big deal. But this time, we're exploring the nuance on how one pathway can cause them to do opposite yet critical things with both somehow still being super beneficial. Oh, and we're gonna talk about how to turn this pathway on via lifestyle. Because you know, we can't help but talk about that. Let's go. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic way. Today, we are back on the topic of cellular cleanup or the in-house mechanisms and pathways which rid our cells of insults and keep our internal self operating efficiently. But you knew that because... You've watched all of our recent deep dives on the topic, highlighting how there are various different processes carrying out these cleanup activities, ranging from whole cell processes such as autophagy to more focused protein-specific pathways and, when all else fails, programmed cell death or apoptosis, eliminating the cell itself for the good of the broader body. That being said, we're not talking about any of those today, kind of. Instead, we are honing in on the cleanup mechanisms for the aforementioned absolutely critical energy producing organelles, which reside in almost every single one of our cells by the hundreds to thousands, producing the oh so important currency we use to sustain life, adenosine triphosphate or ATP. This cleanup pathway is known as mitophagy. Yeah, basically autophagy, but with an M, because it is focused on recycling and removing mitochondria. And not just any mitochondria, the, you know what? We'll actually get to that in just a minute. First, let me tell you or remind you why this is significant. And it's because of this simple biological truth. With great energy comes great damage. Damage, which is accelerated and exacerbated when combined with a suboptimal lifestyle, which just so happens to be the modern Western lifestyle. Yikes is right. Let me explain. One of the natural byproducts of energy metabolism or synthesizing ATP is the release of free radicals. These are unstable compounds which in their quest to become neutralized, damage components of the surrounding cell and sometimes even DNA. Now, although there is always some level of free radical leak, this leak can become more prevalent when mitochondria are overabundant and less efficient, something which is tightly associated with metabolic dysfunction. The same metabolic dysfunction which is suspiciously tied to the hip with the modern Western lifestyle. You know, the 24-7 ultra-processed eating, chronic sleep deprivation, extreme sedentary behavior, severe nature deficit, chemicals and pharmaceuticals galore, and chronic activation of the stress response. Yeah. And here's the thing. Data suggests that nearly 90% of the U.S. adult population is dealing with some sort of metabolic dysfunction. And since mitochondria are the center of metabolic life as we know it, this implicates them as suspect numero uno. And much of the data supports this hypothesis. As we've seen over and over again through our numerous deep dives into this powerhouse of an organelle, that its dysfunction is at the core of conditions such as chronic inflammation, type 2 diabetes, neurological dysfunction, bone and muscle atrophy, mental health disorders, and a whole lot more. Which is why keeping these little power plants healthy and efficient is such a big deal. And what better way to get this done than by cleaning up the weak, damaged, leaky ones before they become a bigger metabolic problem. Which brings us to the question, how can the body proactively pick these problem children out and target those for mitophagy while preserving the healthy ones? A perfect time to introduce you to the pathway and focal point of this new study, AMPK. 
Adenosine 5 monophosphate activated protein kinase is an enzyme which helps regulate energy balance, being a nutrient sensing jack of many biological trades, most of them probably still evading our human knowledge. But what we do know is that this pathway, when activated, seems to upregulate a number of health and longevity associated mechanisms and reactions throughout the body. Doing this by sending a biological signal that could be translated to rough times maybe ahead. So all cells in the area better be ready to hunker down and get more efficient. Now, in this modern world, that signal is, more times than not, stimulated when there is some sort of external stressor at play, which include good stressors, many of which we're gonna talk about in just a little bit. But we first need to complete this mitochondria connection. You know, the whole point of the video, yeah. Because in addition to regulating energy homeostasis, decreasing inflammation, improving insulin sensitivity, enhancing physical performance, and assisting with proper hormone production, AMPK has long been touted for its role in stimulating autophagy and mitophagy, a pathway which researchers out of University of Dundee, Scotland, recently observed is much more complex than previously thought, as they found in both cell cultures and a mouse model that this pathway is intelligent enough to target specific mitochondria for mitophagy discovering a mechanism whereby AMPK activation can stimulate the removal of damaged mitochondria, yet block the removal of healthy ones. Hmm, you don't say. And they added even more nuance to these findings by observing that under normal conditions, the majority of mitophagy in tissues may not be a response solely to damaged mitochondria and instead may reflect adaptations to metabolic fluctuations. Hmm, I don't know about you, but my favorite part was how it left more questions than answers, as all good research should. Now, I wanna circle back on the very interesting terminology under normal conditions, because I personally would translate that to normal living, which let's be honest, for mice in this study and humans out in the wild aren't very similar, other than I guess the constant consumption of ultra processed junk, which mice chow might actually have the upper hand there, but we digress. I bring this up to ask a question. What if we go outside? the norms, re-channeling the habits which our biology was built on, habits which may have been normal thousands of years ago but we've lost connection to, and living a lifestyle which intentionally or unintentionally ramps up this pathway just a little bit more, and thus keeping our cellular self and mitochondrial self operating efficiently for longer. Is that a possibility? Anyone? Ron? Burgundy? Well, there happens to be a few ways we can do just that. Let's explore. First, and oftentimes the most talked about stimulator of AMPK is strategic nutrient deprivation. Think daily time restricted eating, intermittent fasting, and caloric restriction, which despite popular belief are not all the same things. However, they do often work in kind of the same ways. This is because low circulating nutrients is one of the most direct signals that activates AMPK, kicking off the hunker down process, which not only upregulates the desire for nutrients, but in conjunction makes the body, specifically the mitochondria, begin their efficiency consolidation. Thus, performing a strategic daily fast for periods of 12 to 18 hours, a periodic intermittent fast for 24 plus hours, or even going on a carbohydrate restricted low calorie diet for a period of time have all shown promise in ramping up AMPK and its downstream benefits. This has been reinforced by studies of time restricted feeding in humans, which have shown that consumption of one's energy in an eight hour window or less regulates the expression of autophagy genes. Now, 
before embarking on a protocol like this, it's important to have a good strategy to maintain muscle and bone density. So strategically consuming adequate protein and doing this next AMPK stimulating intervention is also key. Which brings us to badonka donking, aka exercise. Research here has shown that exercise increases the family of proteins which kick off cellular cleanup processes, and that high intensity interval training can significantly increase AMPK activation, as short bursts of intense movement followed by rest periods can stimulate AMPK due to the rapid depletion of ATP, all while preserving the oh-so-critical muscle mass and thus bone density in the process. Looks like we can also add this to the growing list of reasons. Movement is medicine. Next, we have the what we eat factor. This would ideally be in parallel to a strategic meal timing protocol because there happen to be components in food that tickle this pathway as well. Specifically, phytonutrients and antioxidants in colorful fruits, veggies, herbs, and spices. Some notable ones include berries, nuts, pomegranates, citrus, fruit, apples, cruciferous veggies, and cacao, which are comprised of AMPK stimulating compounds such as quercetin, resveratrol and sulforaphane. Then there are herbs and spices such as berberine and curcuum with green tea and foods rich in omega-3s adding to the party. All of these have shown promise in enhancing AMPK activity and with it, cellular recycling too. While the ultra-processed, energy-dense, nutrient-scarce alternatives have been shown to impair and weaken our mitochondria, leading to more leakiness and dysfunction, as we saw here. So it's probably a good idea to real food it up. An additional beneficial yet uncomfortable stressor, which has also shown promise is the cold. As research has shown, cold exposure can activate AMPK, particularly in brown adipose tissue, which is involved in thermogenesis. And not surprisingly, heat and cold stress have both displayed benefits in repairing damaged and misfolded proteins in similar ways to autophagy. And if you couldn't tell, the unfortunate yet empowering theme here seems to be getting a little uncomfortable. Now, I wouldn't be doing my job if I did not remind you that almost all of the health benefits of any intervention go out the window when you do not prioritize your Z's. High quality circadian aligned sleep, that is. Not only is this a time where your brain's detoxification system, the glymphatic system is activated as discussed here, Sleep has also been shown to be critical for getting the full benefits of cellular recycling. One of the reasons being that melatonin or our master sleep hormone plays a key modulating role in autophagy, with research showing that one of its modulating pathways is activating AMPK. Yeah, don't say. Oh, that rhymed. So keeping strong circadian alignment, going to bed when the sun goes down and waking up when it rises, prioritizing an eight hour sleep opportunity in between is critical for your clean up operations. Now, as we saw today, this topic is riddled with nuance and a lot of moving pieces. But what we do know is that a clean or dirty environment is a total vibe shifter. And although your old college house may be the first thing that popped into your head when I said that, I know it was for me, <laughs> I'm not referring to the external world. The vibe shift happens in here. So help yourself by creating a clean slate each day and enabling your cellular and metabolic self to do its thing. AKA, make you feel how you're capable of feeling by operating at its true potential. I mean, just picture what your life would look like if your garbage didn't get picked up for a month. And then multiply that by decades. Yeah. That's why your cleanup pathways are kind of a big deal. Really? You're never going to watch that movie the same again. Tell me 